Hey everybody, my name is Sam Gross with electricbikereport.com and today we are taking a look at the all new, recently released Aventon Adventure Fat Tire E-Bike. Now this is Aventon's first time building a full-size fat tire e-bike and it's really impressive. They've done a great job of putting a 750 watt rear hub motor from Bafung in the back, a larger than average 720 watt hour battery that's really nicely integrated into the frame and you can just look at it, they built a really nice looking bike. Today we're going to put this bike through a series of tests that will demonstrate how quickly it slows down, how quickly it accelerates, how it climbs hills, and how long it will last on a single battery charge. So stick with us and we'll see how this thing performs. So for a sub $2,000 bike, Aventon has done a really good job of giving you a lot of bang for your buck with the Aventure. Starting from the top down, we're going to take a look at the specs here. So the display is an LCD backlit color display. And of bikes that we've tested at this price point, this has got to be one of our favorites at EBR. It's color, it has lots of cool little features, like it tells you how much carbon you've saved and how many trees you've saved. It tells you your speed. And then the really big deal for us is the fact that it has a percentage-based battery readout. So instead of having a little bar, telling you how much battery you have left, it'll actually tell you almost exactly how much battery you have left. And in our range testing, we found that that percentage readout was very accurate. It was really helpful figuring out how much further you could go. Moving on to the brakes, you have Bengal hydraulic disc brakes that do a good job of slowing you down. Also, the grips, these Velo rubber grips, and I'm gonna put a special emphasis on the fact that these are rubber. Something that a lot of bikes are doing right now, especially fat tire full-size bikes just like this one, is they're putting these faux stitched leather ergonomic grips on them, which they look really nice and under 90% of riding circumstances, they're really comfortable until your palms get sweaty. And as soon as my palms get a little bit slick, that faux leather becomes very slippery. It gets tough to grip, so it's super awesome to see a Venton putting rubber grips on this bike. That is something we always really enjoy to see. The seat is also really, really comfortable. It's branded as a Venton. We're not sure who makes it, but it is custom made for them. Aventon seats are just very, very nice for comfort seats. They're large, they're flat, they're supportive. Uh, I, you can ride this bike for an extended period of time without getting any sort of numbness or discomfort. We're a big fan of the seats. Moving on to the drivetrain, you have some Shimano Acera seven-speed drivetrain. Really great setup, pretty standard for a bike of this price point. We have really no gripes with it. It does its job well. So powering the adventure is a 750 watt Bafung rear hub motor. Again, this is a pretty standard motor that we see on full size fat tire e-bikes of this size. But there's something that Aventon has done here with this motor that has made it just exceptionally fast. This bike is class two, and that's how it ships. That's how Aventon advertises the bike. But inside the settings in the display, it's really easy to change to a class three, which gives it with pedal assistance, so no throttle, up to 28 miles an hour of motor assisted speed. This thing is just fast. It's really torquey, it's really fun to ride. It has no problem clipping along at 28 miles an hour. And up hills, which you'll see later, our hill test, which is on a pretty remarkably steep hill, the thing climbs like a mountain goat. It's a great bike. The battery is a little bit larger than what you see on some of the competitor bikes in this same category. It's 720 watt hours, 48 volts, 15 amp hours. That's a pretty sizable battery, so it gives this thing a pretty good range. I wouldn't say it gives it a range that's necessarily a leg up on its competitors, but it does exactly as advertised, and we'll get a little bit more into the details of how this thing performed in our real-world range test later in the video. The Aventon also has a really nice integrated front headlight that's controlled by the display. You can turn it on and off with just the push of the button. And then in the back, which is really cool, inside the left side chain say, which is the side that cars would be passing you on if you're riding in a bike lane, they've embedded a brake light which is just a really cool feature. It, there's a lot of little things that Aventon has done on this bike that make it just really awesome to ride. And then the version of the bike that we tested came with optional racks. We really dig the racks. They're an add-on if you choose to buy the bike. The front one has a 20 pound weight capacity. The back one has a 55 pound weight capacity. And it also comes with fenders, metal fenders, which is a huge deal. They are so much quieter, so much stronger and they actually just look nice and solid. So it comes with Kenda Fat 4-inch tires. Again, really nice tires from a name brand. We love to see name brand components on these kind of sub $2,000 budget bikes. It has a cadence sensor that'll tell the motor when to turn on and off, and in addition to that, a speed sensor that also kind of gives you a little bit of added 
uh, added engagement speed. It, it, it works well. So tying things together at the front of the bike and taking the edge off on some of the rougher terrain that we've ridden on is an 80 millimeter zoom suspension fork does a really nice job of kind of just smoothing out the road, smoothing out some of the light off-road riding that this thing is gonna be capable of. It's a really nice fork. One thing Aventon has done a great job with this bike is making it just solid. Everything fits together really, really nicely. For a sub $2,000 bike and Aventon's first shot at building a full-size fat tire e-bike, we're incredibly impressed in the type of, and the amount of value that they've been able to pack into this thing. So stay tuned and we'll show you just how it does out in the real world. So to talk about the Aventure's handling, we came out to a spot that we actually think this bike would be perfect for. We're in a campsite. This would be a great bike for people who are trying to get into the outdoors. Maybe you're not quite ready for a mountain bike, maybe you're not really interested in mountain biking, but you wanna get out in the dirt a little bit. This would be a great bike for that, just like what the, the name is, the Aventure. It's supposed to sound like adventure. So as a full-size fat tire e-bike, it's not going to handle super well in really tight single track. That's why we say it's not quite a mountain bike. It's, it's a lot of bike. The thing weighs almost 75 pounds, but that weight shouldn't really scare you off. As long as you're out kind of in the open, on an open bike path, open road, open dirt road, it handles really, really well, and it handles its weight really, really well. It's a fairly snappy handling bike, but because of those four inch tires and the geometry, it's really stable feeling. It's really confidence inspiring. You can go around corners with plenty amount of speed and you can also go through rough stuff with plenty amount of speed. You'll see in this video, I rode it on some mountain bike single track and it held its own fine. Probably wouldn't be where I, uh, I spend most of my time on this bike, but it did it just great. So quite possibly the biggest thing we've noticed about this bike is how just stable and put together it feels. Quite often, especially under that $2,000 price point, what we can kind of consider our value or budget buys, you get bikes that just rattle. They make noise. They, they go over rough things like it's rough. It shakes you around a little bit. The Aventon's a really smooth ride and it's quiet. It feels very bolted together and solid. And I'm gonna be, almost get really repetitive here because that's just what we can't get over. It's just a solid feeling bike. Even on this rougher road, these dirt roads that we're riding it on today, it just feels nice. I can go fast without really worrying about it. So these fat tire e-bikes, they definitely sell an image of off-road capability. And don't get me wrong, they're, they're good off-road. They can do it. But where these things really thrive is on bike paths, dirt roads, smooth and gentle double track paths, things like that. And this thing just does so well on it. It's a really fun bike. If that's what you're looking to do, if mountain biking is really not your game and you're looking for just dirt road riding or bike path riding, this is an awesome choice. So for our range test, where we figure out exactly how far these bikes will go on a single charge, we put it through two different tests. The first one, we take it out at its maximum assist level, so PAS5, and ride it until the battery dies. And then in the second test, we take it out on PAS1, so the lowest assist setting, and do the same thing. We ride it just until the battery dies. And for the Aventure, it actually did exactly what Aventon said it would do. On PIS ones, the lowest assist setting, we rode it for 53.7 miles, and Aventon told us that they calculated it would go 53 miles on a single charge. And then on PS5, the maximum assist setting, it went for 24.7 miles, and Aventon told us it would go for 25. So kind of surprising that we actually saw a bike match the manufacturer calculations on what the battery life would be. That's kind of a tough thing to do without actually going out in the real world and real world and riding it around. And there's something I'd also like to point out about what this bike did while it was actually dying. So one cool feature, which you've already mentioned, is that it has a percentage-based battery readout. So it kind of gives you a, as exact as it possibly can idea of how much battery you have left. And once it hits about the 20% mark, one, the indicator turns orange which is kind of a cool feature. It's giving you a little bit of a warning. And the bike actually starts to deliver power differently. So it still reaches its 28 mile an hour maximum motor assisted speed, well, pedal assisted speed, but it just gets there a little bit slower. It's kind of like a little bit more of a gentle power delivery. And then at about 5% remaining, it dropped to 20 miles an hour max. So I still had it unlocked to a class three bike, but the motor didn't really want to push faster than 20 miles an hour, maybe 21 if I, if I was going downhill. But this bike kind of 
died with dignity on our range test. It didn't just run out of battery randomly. It did its absolute best to make sure that it would get you home with at least a little bit of pedal assistance. So we've already talked a little bit about how powerful the event and adventure is and, and just kind of how fast it goes. And we've hinted a little bit at how fast it goes uphill. So we've come out to Hellhole, the electric bike report test hill, to actually test it going uphill and see just how fast it goes. And as you can see behind me, this is a really steep hill. It's about a third of a mile long, 12% grade on average. So it's pretty extraordinary really for any type of riding that we do. But with a 750 watt rear hub motor, we think this bike's gonna do just fine going up the hill. And actually, a little bit of a, a, a plot twist here. I've already taken it up this hill and I can speak to the fact that it goes really, really fast uphill, but we haven't timed it yet. So let's see how well it goes. So as I've said before, it's no secret that the Adventure is a really well climbing bike. On throttle only, it went up this hill in one minute and 22 seconds at an average speed of 13.2 miles an hour. And on PIS-5, the max pedal assist setting with me pedaling very gently, it went up the hill at an average speed of 15.5 miles an hour in one minute and 10 seconds. So a really solid result from a, actually a pretty heavy bike. So what I alluded to before is that this is not my first time going up this hill. Pierce Kettering, my electric bike report colleague and I, have a little bit of a, a friendly competition. We're both kind of uh, competitive bike riders, so we can't really let the other one win. For a long time, actually since I started at Electric Bike Report, Pierce has held the KOM on this hill, and it's bothered me to no end. I do not like the fact that he has beat me up this. The sad truth is I'm a little bit of a has-been on a bike. I used to be a hotshot racer, but I'm getting old, I'm drinking too much beer, and I can't beat him on my own. So I've been waiting for the right electric bike to show up that would finally let me beat his time. I have to be honest, I didn't really expect it to be a fat tire, 75 pound e-bike, but when we unboxed the Adventure and I got to ride around the parking lot for the first time, I felt the torque and I had a hunch that this was gonna be the bike that would do it because torque, when you're climbing a hill this steep is gonna be the most important feature. And so on the range test, when no one was looking, I took off and beelined for this hill and on PAS5, giving it a physical effort that left me dry heaving at the top, crushed Pierce's time. So take that, you little shit. So another test we do with these bikes, we take it around a set circuit near the EBR offices in St. George. And what this test tells us is one, it demonstrates the mile an hour difference between each pedal assist level. So we start with no pedal assistance and go on every level all the way up to PAS5 or whatever the particular bike's max is. Another thing it tells us, it just kind of gives us an idea of the overall bike's, overall bike's performance. How fast it goes on max pedal assist level, how quickly it goes around corners, things like that. And the Adventure did really, really well. On average, we, we clocked about a 3.6 mile an hour difference between each of the pedal assist levels, starting at one and going all the way to five. But something that is worth noting, especially about these big fat tire bikes, and this isn't necessarily unique to the Adventure, this is just kind of something we notice on these bigger bikes, is that with no pedal assistance, these things are kind of a bear to pedal. They're not really fun, especially if you've got hills. For our no pedal assistance lap, it did just over 10 miles an hour, which is honestly not that fun to pedal and we also noticed the same thing same thing during our range tests and Aven also has a nicely refined difference between their pedal assistance level especially the lowest ones so on PAS1 Josh who does our long distance range test for us he always comments every time we test an event in that they're just 
kind of tough to pedal at PIS-1. He clocked about 11 mile an hour average. I did the same, same average around our circuit test. It's just kind of slow if you're down on your low battery percentage or even run out. Expect it to be a little bit tough, especially considering this is a 75 pound bike. But overall, the performance of this, this thing was really awesome. As we've mentioned several times in this video, it is a super fast bike. It actually set our fastest known time around our circuit at 26 mile an hour average. That is screaming fast. Everyone always is surprised when we talk about our average speeds around our circuit test on PIS-5 that we don't have a bunch of bikes just doing 28 miles an hour. But in the real world, there's things like hills, there's things like corners, and our circuit test is no different. We have about a 35 foot hill in the test. We've got four corners. We do have to watch for a little bit of traffic even though it's about the closest thing to a close course we can get. But 26 miles an hour is smoking fast, especially considering that this is a fat e-bike. We kind of expected something a little skinnier, skinny tires to go faster, but this is so far the quickest we've tested. It's a really great bike. So in order to get an idea of how the adventure comes to a stop, we've come out here and set up a braking test. And what this test is gonna do is we have a set of five cones, each spaced five feet apart. We're gonna take this thing up to the maximum throttle assisted speed of 20 miles an hour, go up to the first cone, jam on the brakes as hard as possible, and see just how quickly the bike stops. We're gonna do that five times, take the average of the five, and that's our result. Let's see how it does. So in our brake test, the event and adventure actually performed a lot better than we expected it to. It came to a stop on average in 11 feet and one inches, which is actually, we're pretty sure, the quickest stopping bike we've ever tested here at EBR. That's, that's a pretty remarkable result, especially considering that this is a 75 pound bike. That is a lot of weight that is stopping very, very, very quickly. So I chalk this up to a couple of different things. The first being it's got hydraulic disc brakes. They're Bengals Aries 3 brakes. They're a pretty solid brake. It's not a man manufacturer we see very often, but it's something that Aventon has used on a couple of their bikes. The, the level is one in particular that we think of. But this also has 180 millimeter disc brake rotors, which is a pretty big disc brake rotor. On mountain bikes, the largest you really see, other than a downhill bike, is about 203 millimeters. 180 is kind of the industry standard, even for mountain biking. So these are good size brakes. The other thing, and I think this might be the biggest factor contributing to how quickly this bike stops, are those really big four inch tires. These Kenda tires have a pretty good tread on them, actually a little bit more aggressive than some of the other tires we've seen on fat tire bikes. And I think that brings this bike to a stop really quickly. It's, it's just a lot of rubber dragging across the ground. Overall, we're really impressed with how quickly this thing stopped. And if we're being totally honest, we didn't think this thing was gonna, gonna come to a stop that quickly. We thought it would be a good result, but 11 feet feet and one inches, that's really fast, especially for a 75 pound bike. So the braking on this thing is stellar. So something I don't talk about very often in my role at EBR is that I'm kind of a fat bike skeptic. I come from a background of mountain bike racing and road bike racing and cyclocross racing and fat bikes are just foreign to me. It's not something that I personally jive with. But the Adventure is the first one I've tested that I'm starting to change my tune. This is just a really all around solid bike. The thing that I really want you guys to take away from this is it's all about the little details of this thing. At its core, it's really right in line with what we see on the market today at the sub $2,000 fat electric bike. It's got a 750 watt Bafung rear hub motor. The battery is slightly larger. It's not a 672 watt hour battery, which is what we see on many of the competitors' bikes. It's a 720 watt hour battery. But moving away from those things, this bike is just chock full of little details that Aventon has done that has made this thing kind of set ahead of everything else. It's the fact that the display is color and that it has a battery percentage readout, not those little bars that tell you how much battery you have left. The percentage is a big deal. It's the fact that it has rubber grips instead of the faux leathers. It's the fact that the battery is so well hidden inside the frame. It is a beautifully integrated battery. This thing is just kind of as a whole package, 
Just all these little details that are coming together to make a really, really nice riding bike. And for me, who is kind of a self-described fat bike skeptic, it's been a really fun thing to test. I personally did the short range test on it, the one where we do the PAS5 setting, and I had a blast the whole time. It just clips along at 28 miles an hour. It handles really, really nicely. And today, while shooting this video, we did a lot more off-road riding than we really ever do on these bikes. And again, I had a blast. Now that's not to say that we're giving this thing the stamp of approval as a mountain bike. It's just too big, it's just too heavy. All the bikes in this category are the same way. They're good for light off-road use. Think dirt roads, smooth gravel paths, things like that. And they're really awesome on-road too. Bike paths, on the shoulder of a road, things like that. But this thing is all around just fun. Aventon has done a really great job for their first take of a full-size fat tire e-bike. It's been a great time riding it. So again, this is a brand new bike from Event, and it just got introduced in the past few weeks. So be sure to leave us a comment below on what you think of it. And if you've enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe to our channel. And if you want more information about this bike, there's a written review, a link to it in the description below with more details than what we could cram into this video. For Electric Bike Report, I'm Sam Gross. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.